Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire for Scrapbooking Cards Today. In this video, I'm going to give you a peek at the three techniques that I shared in the recent issue of Scrapbooking Cards Today that show things you can do with clear acetate or clear products. So this could be transparencies or clear tags. There are a lot of things you can do with them. So I have three cards today. I'm gonna to start with this one first because I think this is my favorite technique. And this is using an embossing folder on acetate. So I have an embossing folder here from We Are Memory Keepers and a piece of acetate. This is a nice thick acetate. It, I cut it from a Hero Arts note card, but you could use any kind of transparency. For this technique, the thicker the better. So I'm putting it into this We Are Memory Keepers embossing folder. You can use any embossing folder that you may have and run it through your die cut machine as you would any embossing folder. Now this is going to emboss just like paper would, but the cool thing about using an embossing folder on the acetate is that wherever it stretches that acetate or embosses it, it turns kind of white. So it looks like it may be etched ice or something. I don't know, it's really cool and the texture is beautiful and it really stands out, especially when you put it on dark cardstock. Okay, so I gotta get my embellishment ready and I'm gonna show you how I glue a card together that has a big acetate piece like that. So I have a star that I cut from a Hero Arts star die and the magical die cut word that I cut from a waffle flower die. I die cut that from some silver cardstock. Now I've got some sentiments from a waffle flower stamp set and I'm cutting them apart so that I can stack the sentiments on top of each other when I do the stamping. It doesn't damage your stamps to cut them if you're cutting in between the stamped image, just on the background polymer. It doesn't hurt your stamp at all, and this way you can arrange it however you want, and you can always mount it how it was originally intended. So I have this glitter die cut here. I'm just putting a little bit of multi-medium on the back of it. I find when I'm putting adhesive on the back of delicate die cuts like this, it's best to hold it with some tweezers. So I'm just holding it with tweezers, and now once I have all that adhesive on the back, I can easily just pick up that die cut with the tweezers and put it exactly where I need, and I don't have to fumble with my fingers doing so. So I'm going to just position this exactly where I want, and then I'll press that down. I also went ahead and white heat embossed the sentiment that I cut up and stacked it right above the die cut. So now it's time to assemble all these things together, but I need to be kind of tricky and hide my adhesive because I don't want it to show through that acetate background. So I decided it would be helpful if I cut a white mat for this star. Now the die set that I had, this was the biggest die in the set, so I didn't have anything to cut a white star mat, so I'm just going to cut my own. I'm adhering it to some white cardstock, and I'm just going to cut around the die, just leaving a little bit of a space. So I'm creating my own mat. It's not gonna be perfect, but I don't think anybody will ever know. Another thing you can do is use your pencil and trace around the outside edge of the die, and that'll give you a shape that's slightly bigger than the die cut itself. Now we can put the card together and hide all the adhesive. So I'm going to put adhesive on the back of the blue star, and I'm going to put this on the top of our embossed acetate. Now I'm being generous with adhesive here because I want to make sure that that sticks to the texture on the acetate. So I'm just holding the acetate where I want it to be on the card just so I can get my star straight on here. And then I'll press the star onto the top of the acetate. Once I have it exactly where I want it, I can flip the acetate over and then I can adhere the white star to the back of it. This will give me a nice place to adhere everything and I really like the look of that white star around it. You could skip that white matte star. I just think it gives a nice finishing look. Okay, so now I can put some adhesive on the white star, and I'm just going to line it up on the back of the acetate so it shows through around the outside of the blue star. And finally, I'm now going to put adhesive on the back of the white star and add that to the note card itself. So when you're putting down acetate onto a card, a big piece of acetate like this, and you want to hide the adhesive, just hide it behind any of the embellishments or pieces that you're putting on top. In this case, I'm putting it behind the star. If you want to, you can put a strong adhesive behind there, a liquid adhesive, just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. I just finished off the cards by adding some additional die cut pieces just to create a little bit of an embellishment. And there you have the first technique of using an embossing folder on acetate. The results are really cool. It's really neat how it stretches and it turns it white. The second acetate technique that I want to share today is to create floating pieces on the window of a card. 
to do this, it's really important to cut pieces that can hide your adhesive on the other side of the window. So I stamped these little deer from Clearly Besotted and colored them with Copic markers. Now I folded the paper over so that when I cut them out, I'm actually cutting out two shapes, one that has the coloring and then another ex of the exact same shape that's just plain white cardstock. You'll see while we're doing this in a moment. Now it's time to create the window on the front of a card. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card and a piece of craft cardstock that's cut slightly smaller than the front of the card. I'm taping them together, just perfectly positioned, and then I'm going to tape a large circle die right to the front of it. This way, when I cut the circle, I'm actually cutting through both that craft piece that will be on the front of the card and the front of the note card itself. And the circles will be perfectly lined up. It's really a lot easier to cut through both layers at once. And if you use a shim, it should be no problem to cut through them. So now it's time to glue this together. I'm putting some strong double-sided tape on the back of our craft panel here. This will be the front of our card. Now you could use any kind of dry adhesive here, but I think it's really good to use something that's super strong since we're gonna have acetate in between. So now I'm putting an adhesive around the window on the front of the card also. We really wanna sandwich that acetate in there nicely around all this adhesive. And I have a piece of acetate slight, cut slightly bigger than that window opening. I'm gonna put that in place, and now I can put the craft piece on top of it, and the acetate will be sandwiched between. In this case, you can use anything clear for this. You could use clear packaging. It doesn't really matter that it's not super thick. So anything that you can find that's clear will work here. I also white and he heat embossed a greeting on a piece of pink cardstock, and I cut another piece of pink cardstock to be the exact same size. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this over the window, and also adhere my cute little deer on the front of the window too. Now when we open up this card, you will see the adhesive on the back of these pieces. You, you, this may not bother you, in which case you can just leave it completely as is, but what I like to do is glue those extra pieces that we cut on the other side of this so that we can hide all of the adhesive. If you have coordinating dies for your stamps, it's really easy to just go ahead and die cut a plain white shape for this back piece. But in this case, I didn't have the dies, so I just hand cut them by doubling the cardstock over and it didn't take me any more time. So now our adhesive is completely covered up and you don't have to worry about it, seeing it at all when you open up the card. I think it's really fun how it looks like these little guys are floating on the front of our window. The third technique I wanted to share with you today for using acetate is to stamp on it. I'm going to be using white stays on ink because I love how bright white that is on the acetate. Now the stays on ink usually needs to be re-inked every time you use it. That's why it comes with a re-anchor and that way you can get great results. Now I'm going to stamp a background stamp onto my acetate. If I were to mess up and smudge it because it is stamping onto a slick surface, all you need to do is take an alcohol swab or some rubbing alcohol and you can clean the stamped image completely off of the acetate. Just let it dry and you can try again. You'll never know that you had done some stamping before. It's a great way to easily fix a mistake when you're stamping on acetate. This time I'm stamping onto a Hero Arts acetate tag, but you could do this on any acetate that you may have. Just make sure that the stamp doesn't shift when you're stamping so you can get a crisp image. But again, if you mess up, you can just clean it off with some rubbing alcohol. So while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and get my stickers ready. The, I'm gonna spell out the word hugs with these great alphabet letters. Now what I like to do is take another piece of acetate and put my alphabet letters exactly how I want them positioned on the edge of the acetate. It's just like a holding place so that I can arrange my letters exactly how I want them before I bring them to my card. That way I don't tear the paper when I try to move them. So again, those letters are hanging off the edge of the acetate. So this is actually a fourth technique for using acetate with your card making. However, this acetate won't end up on the card. It's just, I'm just using it as a tool. Once my tag is dry, I can add it to the card. I have die cut a craft heart here, and this is what I'm going to use to hide my adhesive behind. So I'll put all the adhesive behind that heart when I glue it onto this red card. I also have die cut some little leaf pieces here that I colored with some markers, just so they had some variation in color. And I'm just gonna glue those on top also. Once I'm happy with where everything is on the front of the tag, I'm gonna put some adhesive behind that heart again to hide it and put that right onto the bottom of this red note card. I really think it's important to use a strong dry adhesive when adhering your acetate to cards, just so you can make sure that it doesn't come undone. 
Now I can position my letter stickers. All I have to do is pick up that acetate, put exactly where I want it, and then press the top of the letters onto the card once they're positioned where I want them. That will stick the letters to the card. I can hold my finger there and pull the acetate from away from underneath it. And there my letters are perfectly positioned. This is really helpful when working with stickers. I'm one of those people who doesn't always get it right the first time. I have to move things around. And using that acetate to kind of hold it really makes a big difference. So there you have a technique of stamping on your acetate. I hope you like all three of these techniques. And if you have any questions, please visit scrapbookandcardstoday.com. Thanks so much for watching.